Thank you for joining us once again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Troy David Phillips, Flashback Comics, and I am here because Bounding Into Comics has asked me to talk about the Ant-Man, the astonishing Ant-Man. Dr. Henry Pym, who first appeared in Tales to Astonish number 27 way back in 1962, The Man in the Ant Hill was the story. Dr. Pym has accidentally reduced himself to the size of an insect and fallen into an anthill. He has a series of classic horror-themed adventure uh, where he is chased by ants that are trying to kill him, but another ant comes along that actually helps him to get out of the anthill where he is returned to his lab and where he restores himself to his proper size. He dumps these chemicals down the sink, vowing never to do that again. And as we all know, that was completely false because in Tales to Astonish number 35, Hank Pym returned as the Ant-Man. This time, Hank has a costume. He has an electronic helmet of his own devi dev devising where he can now communicate with ants and control whole swarms of them. Uh, regular ants, warrior ants, and even flying ants. Yes, I know that that is an incorrect term, but go with it, it was 1963. Hank Pym would be introduced to Janet Van Dyne in the pages of Tales to Astonish number 44. Now this is also 1963, and the Wasp would join him as his crime-fighting partner. Uh, she had come along and enlisted his aid to take vengeance for the death of her father. Her father was killed by a gigantic invading alien. After defeating this alien, Wasp and Ant-Man went on together, and Janet Van Dyne began to develop romantic and affectionate feelings for Hank Pym. This would largely come into play both in the pages of Tales to Astonish and in the pages of The Mighty Avengers. Ant-Man and the Wasp, along with Thor, the Hulk, and Iron Man, founded the team, The Avengers, also in 1963. A lot happens in 1963. Uh, they are the founders of this team, and Hank Pym begins to feel somewhat undermined, undervalued, underutilized, uh, basically overwhelmed because he is on a team with Iron Man and Thor and the Hulk. What does Hank Pym do? He finds a way to reverse the serum so that instead of shrinking, he can now grow to giant size. He has now doubled his height, he is 12 feet tall, possesses superhuman strength, and this is the beginning of Dr. Hank Pym's shortness of uh, self-esteem. Pardon the pun there. Dr. Pym would continue as Giant Man in the pages of the Avengers until such time as he and the Wasp left the team along with Thor and Iron Man, the Hulk having previously quit. Uh, Captain America would continue to lead the Avengers. Why did Hank Pym leave? Largely because Stan Lee at the time wanted to write out all of the characters that had their own titles because it was becoming difficult for him to coordinate the stories. As the sole writer at the time, I can imagine that it was a bit complicated. Hank went back to the pages of Tales to Astonish and continued to have adventures until such a time as his feature ended and he was overtaken by the Incredible Hulk and further supplanted by the Submariner. However, Dr. Hank Pym as Giant Man would return to the pages of the Avengers in Avengers number 28. Uh, this would also introduce the Collector, and it would be Hank Pym coming back in a brand new costume, uh, and he would find himself stuck at the height of 10 feet tall. At this point, he changed his name to Goliath, and this begins to illustrate a theme that other writers would come back to, which is to say that Hank has now had three different identities in a fairly short succession of time. It says a lot about his mental stability, a lot about his self-esteem, uh, that he continues to have a hard time grasping his own identity. Dr. Pym would eventually, with the aid of Bill Foster, a.k.a. Black Goliath, uh, he would be able to return to normal human proportions, and he would continue to act as a size-changing adventurer. He would also return to the Ant-Man identity, Briefly, uh, in the pages of Marvel Feature, he returned to the astonishing Ant-Man. He and the Wasp were trapped at ant size, insect size, uh, and had a succession of adventures until they were replaced in the pages of Marvel Feature with a new feature. This was the style of the time. 
Hank Pym would later return to the Avengers yet again, returning to the Goliath identity, and he would hold on to that identity for quite some time. At least until he would accidentally create the artificial intelligence that becomes the malevolent robot Ultron. Ultron further exacerbates Dr. Pym's mental instability by mind controlling him and then subsequently giving him a temporary form of amnesia. Uh, Hank has a complete mental breakdown and actually develops a disassociative personality. This secondary personality calls himself Yellow Jacket. Complete new costume, completely redesigned power set and weapon set, and Yellow Jacket claims to have killed Goliath, where he then seizes the Wasp and entreats her to marry him. The Wasp sees through the disguise and goes along with the charade, hoping that she could find some way to reach Hank. And after their wedding is attacked by the Circus of Crime, led by the Ringmaster, Henry Pym recovers his stability and uh, is revealed that, yes, Goliath and Yellow Jacket are the same person. With his two halves reunited, Henry Pym would go on as Yellow Jacket, and he would maintain that Yellow Jacket identity longer than any of the other identities in the pages of the Avengers. Eventually, because of government intervention, the Avengers roster is forcibly shortened to precisely seven members and they don't feel the need for the Wasp and Yellow Jacket to be on the team since they have nearly identical power sets. So the Wasp is retained and Dr. Pym is suddenly given time to pursue his scientific studies. He's off by himself while the Wasp is with the Avengers and this creates some tension in their marriage. Dr. Pym would return to the pages of the Avengers when their roster was shortened even farther this time returning to a classic lineup of originals, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, the Wasp, and Henry Pym himself. Four of the five founders plus Cap. Captain America had been given special founder status at that time, but that's a whole nother story. So Hank continues with the Avengers, but Hank continues also to struggle with self-esteem. He has had a run of bad luck in the lab. He's not come up with any new developments, any new inventions, hasn't published any new papers. Basically, is being overlooked by the scientific community. He's beginning to feel, again, small if you will, in comparison to some of the other great brains like Tony Stark and Reed Richards. Hank decides that he is going to create a robot coated in adamantium and stage an attack on the Avengers where he can then fly in and save the day. Hank is at the lowest point he could possibly be at this point in time, uh, and the Wasp tries to talk him out of this very bad idea. She is unsuccessful, and for the first time in their relationship, Hank strikes the Wasp in a fit of frustration. Interesting sidebar, the writer and the artist experienced a miscommunication at that time, and so the artist depicted the striking incident as much more visceral than the writer intended it to be. And so what should have been a casual, dismissive, backhanded strike, more out of frustration and blind, blind anger than a direct blow, uh, the misinterpretation caused what we now know to be the, the infamous Yellow Jacket slapping incident. In any event, Hank's plan fails miserably, and it is in fact the Wasp who comes in to deactivate the robot. Hank is put on trial before the other Avengers and leaves the Avengers membership, supposedly never to return. At this point in time, Hank falls in to the machinations of his longtime nemesis, Egghead. Egghead manipulates Hank and sets him up for even greater failure, uh, and in the fullness of time, uh, allies him with Egghead's own Masters of Evil. Uh, Hank, however, turns the tables on the Masters of Evil, and with no superheroic guise whatsoever, simply as Dr. Henry Pym, Hank is able to defeat Egghead and the other masters, which include Tiger Shark, Whirlwind, uh, Moonstone, and the Beetle, and save the day. Hank returns to Avengers Mansion with his name cleared. However, 
He folds up the yellow jacket costume, retires, leaves it behind, and goes off into scientific study. We'd not see a lot of Henry Pym for some time until the pages of the West Coast Avengers. He would return as a scientific consultant to the West Coast Avengers. However, he would not put on a costume nor take on a heroic identity again for quite some time. Now, much, much later in the Avengers, Hank would return to size changing. He would return to the Goliath identity, uh, and he would use that as a way to bolster the Avengers' needs for physical strength at the time. He had reworked the size-changing formula to increase his own physical power, and uh, he felt that he was more contributory. He was also, however, using his biochemist background. Uh, he was, again, certainly a scientific consultant to the Avengers, instrumental in reworking the uh, super soldier serum for Captain America during the Fighting Chance story arcs. Hank Pym would once again leave the Avengers, and the Avengers would leave the Marvel Universe. We would see the rebooted stories, which took place in the Heroes Reborn story arcs. The Avengers, Captain America, Iron Man, and the Fantastic Four would all undergo this. For a little over a year, the Avengers were a separate continuity from the main Marvel Universe. However, at the conclusion of the Heroes Reborn storyline came Heroes Return. Now, in 1998, Kurt Busiek and George Perez relaunched the Avengers title brilliantly, bringing back all of the former Avengers and then eventually distilling those 40-some characters down to a core team of seven plus two extras, uh, two Avengers in training, two reservists, if you will. Hank Pym, at this point in time, had gone through, again, his succession of identities, but at this point had settled on the Goliath identity uh, and continued to wear the Goliath costume and back the Avengers up thusly. During this same period of time, Busiek and Perez gave us the Ultron Unlimited storyline, and we learn that Ultron was based on Hank Pym's own engrams, his own brain patterns. And this is where Ultron had developed his irrational hatred of Hank Pym. It was based on Hank Pym's own sense of self-loathing. So Hank is able to defeat Ultron, this time using Antarctic vibranium, the anti-metal vibranium that dissolved Ultron's adamantium shell. And upon doing, Hank recovered enough of an emotional stability, again, a personal growth, a step forward, as he puts it himself in the story, a feeling that he just bought back a piece of his own soul. And he would continue to assist the Avengers, eventually returning to the Yellow Jacket identity. During the Destiny Wars, Hank Pym was plucked from time at two different time periods, one in which he was Goliath, one in which he was Yellow Jacket and the two halves of Hank Pym literally were able to confront each other, literally have their verbal discourse. Eventually, these two sides of Hank's persona were unified into one body and one persona, and again, Hank had recovered a vital piece of himself. Okay, that brings us through a lot of Henry Pym origin and Henry Pym background, and that takes us through what will be part one of a discourse on the astonishing Ant-Man. Thank you for joining us here at Bounding Into Comics. Be sure to come back to see part two, in which I will talk a lot about Ant-Man Scott Lang.